guys, Ron here. Well, geez, every time I start this video, somebody else walks by. I usually do this, uh, or I did this, what, <clears throat> six, eight, nine months ago, this a video of this location, and uh, it was later in the evening. You just can't go out around eight o'clock. It's just too crowded in Los Angeles. This is Bundy Drive. Look how crowded Bundy is. It starts as Sentinella down that way, and it becomes Bundy goes to San Vicente in Montana, kind of around where Marilyn Monroe lived and died. And it ends over, here we have some interesting places which I'm gonna show you. The address has been changed, but the condo still exists. All right, let's see if you can see me. I don't know if you can, but uh, I'll try. Anyway, so I'm out in front of um, what used to be 875 Bundy, or I'm gonna be, it's across the street. And that, as we know, is where Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman were killed on June the 12th, 1994, presumably by O.J. Simpson, although of course we all know he was acquitted in the trial. And there have been uh, other suspects, one notably the so-called uh, cross-country killer, Glenn Rogers, which I find a very interesting case, uh, case to make and theory, and I really didn't know about Glenn Rogers as an alternate suspect or as someone with OJ that night until about a year ago. And I have at least, I think two other vlogs about Glenn Rogers here. You have to scroll down and see somebody honking because he knows I'm filming. Uh, they have nothing better to do. Um, you have to scroll down and see my other videos about Glenn Rogers and his possible involvement. But we'll talk about that and we'll turn it around now. Okay, so. Look at this man. I tell you, you got to come at 10, 11 o'clock. And rush hour is still in effect, too, because Bundy, this is Brentwood, but Bundy back into like Culver City, which is a couple miles that direction, uh, it's just gridlock now. I'm going to have to find another way to go south when I'm uh, leaving this location. Okay, so when these cars eventually stop, so I don't get killed, too, I'm going to go across the street. So as I said, they, they changed the location, or they, excuse me, they changed the address of the murder site because so many tourists were coming by. I mean, and in 1994, 1995, especially during the trial, they had tape up everywhere, yellow tape, and the sidewalk was, was uh, blocked up. You couldn't get anywhere. Now, I imagine the younger people who live here now don't even know about any of that because they're too damn young uh, or care about it. <laughs> if they're in their 20s, it's before they were even alive. But, suffice it to say, um, the location is here, but the address has changed. I'm going to go around the corner, too. So see what they did here. They basically, they, they changed the whole style with these condos. Now, yeah, there isn't that courtyard, although look, the remnants of the courtyard. Remnants of the courtyard. Go up a little bit more here. Now, if you recall, yeah. So they've changed the address, but we see the remnants of the courtyard here. Courtyard was the blood was found, the bloody gloves, <clears throat> the bloody uh, footprints. I'm just gonna walk up for just a second. Do they have a ring? Probably. Okay, people are coming, of course, so let's keep going. Let's pause for a minute. Okay, nobody was coming, just an extremely loud car and people screaming out of it. So, the kids were asleep on the second floor. You know, the whole interesting, the whole scenario is very, very interesting. Um, as I stated in my a more recent vlog that I did about uh, Ron Goldman, when I, when I vlogged Ron Goldman's apartment in Brentwood, which is not too far from here either. Um, the kids were asleep upstairs, Justin and Sydney. It was after Sydney's recital that night. There was ice cream sitting on the counter melting. And what's even more important is, and I'm going to walk down now and make a right on Dorothy Street, which leads to the alley. What's even more important is that, again, let's look at the, that 
walkway again where the bloody footprints and glove were found. What's even more important was that that night, the there were candles. There were candles around the bathtub, and it, I don't know if it was more than Faye Resnick, but for Faye Resnick, um, purported great breast friend of Nicole Brown at that time, said that that was the way that Nicole prepared for a lover to come over. You know, the romantic candles in the bathtub. So Faye Resnick in her book, because everybody, <laughs> so many people wrote books and profited after this horrible crime. Faye Resnick, and yes, I did read Faye's book. She speculated that um, Goldman, uh, that Nicole wanted to have sex with Goldman that night that he was coming over. She was finally going to make her move, as it were. It's really dark. Look how dark it is. All you can see is my shadow here. Look at that. So, you know, we don't know. We don't know. And it's really irrelevant because if um, apparently Ron Goldman was driving around in uh, her Corvette late for a date over time, they did hang out at Starbucks. They did know each other from the restaurant. Um, personally, I'm kind of cynical and I do think they were already involved romantically. But that's just me. No one will say for certain, including Ron's co-workers. But again, two of Ron's former co-workers, I'm going to pause here. Even in the darkness, I don't get a second of peace. People walking up to their car next to me in the darkness. I don't want anybody listening because uh, I just don't. It throws me off. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say, there's the back of the condo, by the way. I was going to say that... Two of Ron's co-workers, and I detail this in the, in the vlog about the Ron Goldman apartment as well, at least two have been murdered. <sighs> so we don't know. The, we're talking about some possible unsavory people were working with Goldman. I don't want to taint the entire crew of Mezzaluna Restaurant from 1994 that were saying that as far as I knew, there was no romantic relationship. But... At least one of them, if not more, were dealing drugs as well and involved with some pretty bad people. Um, so. Okay. So. Let's see here. Looks like I had the wrong address. That's interesting. Oh, that's very interesting. The reason I'm showing you is the uh, alleyway here on Dorothy Street, off Dorothy Street. What does this say? Below, uh, behind the condos, look at the lights keep going on, is because speculation is that OJ parked his Bronco here and then went in through the back gate and he had stolen a key. Look at this. Look at this. Do not enter, no trespassing. I think that's the next complex. Let's go back again. In fact, I was reading that some coins were on the ground the next day. and it, In other words, it looked like somebody might have reached in their pocket real quickly while being parked out here in the alley uh, to get, maybe they were speculating, maybe to put the gloves on. Now, isn't that interesting? So where's the other address? The other address is not listed here. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay. Okay, that's the gate. So I apologize. I was at the wrong address before. Let's go back around front. That's the gate where OJ and or Glenn Rogers or both or neither, I suppose, would have walked in. Surprising. Nicole, Nicole had a menu in her hand that she dropped, something she had retrieved when she came to the door. You know, it was one of those door hanger menus that somebody had left there. And the ice cream was on the counter, and there was a large knife found on the counter in the kitchen as well. Now, what's ironic about that is that Nicole had a, a morbid fear of knives. Like, I don't know if it's as strong as Natalie Wood's fear of dark water. And Natalie Wood, as we know, died in dark water. But reportedly, Nicole had a, a fear of knives. Yet it looks as if she placed a large knife 
on the counter, you know, hearing what's really creepy and dark around here. Really dark and creepy. So I can see now why at 10 o'clock or whatever it was, close to 10, all this could happen on a Sunday evening and no one would know anything. Because other than the cars, it's really dark down Dorothy here. Not as dark on Bundy, but it's really dark down Dorothy Street here. But the fact that Nicole apparently had placed a large knife <clears throat> on the counter makes it appear as if she heard something and she thought either it was a burglar or knew it was OJ and um, was preparing to defend herself by leaving the knife. Now, she didn't walk out with the knife, but she did leave it on the counter. So, in other words, the knife was not found on the ground next to her that she was going to prepare to use as a weapon. I think, personally... I just want to see the addresses here. Do we even have an address? I think it's the next one. Well, they don't even list the addresses now. So, that's why. Okay. Still think it's this one. <laughs> this is certainly, though, what it looked like. However, that gate leads to one of these units over here. It looks like they completely redid the, the front. So I apologize, folks, if I'm not entirely accurate. I really suspected it was a, that 871, but now I think it's, I think, um, maybe one of these two, based on where the garage is. <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's talk about Glenn Rogers. Uh, the Glenn Rogers angle is that... Oh, and by the way, OJ would have gone straight up the alleyway or up Bundy here, this way, all the way down, very close to San Vicente, turned, eventually made his way over to Sunset and then over to Rockingham. Probably five minutes, especially if you're really booking it. Anybody know the term booking it? They still use that? Probably not. So the theory about Glenn Rogers is Glenn Rogers uh, is in prison. He's known as the... <clears throat> Sorry, I don't want to get killed as I'm trying to walk the street here. He is a serial killer, the Golden State Killer. And he himself claimed... Now, again, this is where the, the stories get muddied. He himself claimed that he was working... With, that he came into acquaintance in 1994 with turn this around if you can see me if you see half a head you see half a head Glenn Rogers claimed that in 1994 that he was working with he became acquainted with OJ, with Nicole Brown doing some painting apparently drugs were always a common bond um I don't want to bash Nicole Brown. I did not know her. I don't know how big drugs played a part in her life. Some have said, and again, these are kind of defenders of OJ, that Nicole was heavily involved in drug use, maybe even drug sales. Goldman, Ron Goldman and his restaurant, drug sales, cocaine in particular, were a factor. But, you know, we'll never know. It's all speculation now. But Glenn Rogers apparently was doing some work over at the condo and developed this weird kind of domineering relationship of sorts with Nicole and might have even threatened her. Now, it's also speculated, and some of OJ's defenders say that OJ hired, knowing that Rogers was close to her, hired her, him, hired Rogers, to spy on her, to follow her around, particularly um, after the incident over at Gretna Green, where O.J. found Nicole and Keith Zlomolomich, I can never pronounce the name, who was the manager, I believe, or the owner of Mezzaluna, in a sexually compromising position on the couch when O.J. stormed in and said, how dare you do that with a guy on the couch? I could see you from the front lawn and the kids are upstairs. Anyway, what was my point in all that? Oh, that O.J. was extra cautious and extra... Um, his stalking of Nicole had gained new heights, apparently, after, especially after that incident. And then he, the speculation is, and by the OJ defenders, that he hired Glenn Rogers 
to spy on Nicole because he was already close to her and to rob Nicole, get back some earrings he had given her. And apparently, this is another big theory, is that apparently the photos that were taken, that Nicole had taken of herself or that her sister had taken of her when OJ had beat her up on New Year's Eve 1989 after their famous fight where the cops came out, including, I believe, Mark Furman, that those photos were in a safe deposit box and that Nicole was leveraging Odo, saying, leveraging, using them as blackmail against OJ. And actually, this makes sense to me, saying apparently, theoretically, or not theoretically, but saying apparently, supposedly, that if you, OJ, you know, don't do what I tell you to do, I'm going to release these photos and your career will be damaged, if not, you know, irreparably harmed as a wife beater. And she kept them locked away. So supposedly, OJ kind of was fighting this fine line of his jealousy and his stalking and his desire to, well, I don't know if he could ever get those photos, but enact some kind of revenge on Nicole or scare her enough so that she wouldn't use them. These are all the theories. Now, supposedly Nicole kept a book of, like a day plan or a book, if you guys, any of you guys remember what day planners were, a book of drug dealers and her known associates and that OJ supposedly wanted these, this book. He was felt that he was paying for Nicole's lifestyle, including her drug use, and then he wanted this book so he could either threaten the drug dealers, somehow cut them off, report them to law enforcement, I doubt that. But somehow he wanted to find this book of the drug dealers, and that was one thing that he sent Glenn Rogers in to do. So let's turn it around again and just say that these are all theories. I find them very, very interesting. And what I've always said is that it would be a lot easier for O.J. Simpson to kill two people if he had help rather than by himself. I always thought, and the speculation was, of course, that uh, O.J. came to the door either by himself or with someone else. And, you know, in his, in his book that he wrote, If I Did It, which went over to the uh, Golden family, it's now called I Did It. But If I Did It, the infamous chapter 6 says O.J. is confessing to what he supposedly says. If I did it, this is how I did it. And he says, I, O.J., came over that night. I was with Charlie. He keeps refer referring to his partner or his confederate as Charlie, which, you know, for a while I thought it might have been his son Jason. Now maybe it was Glenn Rogers. Maybe there was no other person there. But that he came over with Charlie and he was surprised by Goldman showing up with the sunglasses and that Goldman got kind of defensive when he, that Goldman might have witnessed OJ intimidating or threatening or even hitting Nicole. And that was where the hey, hey, hey sound came from that the neighbor supposedly heard, supposedly heard a voice saying, hey, hey, hey. And that Goldman, uh, OJ in his book says Goldman went into a karate stance like he was trying to intimidate O.J. and Joe O.J. just kind of laughed it off. They got into a fight and he killed him. And the theory was that Goldman had seen O.J. either in the process of killing Nicole and he was a witness who had to be killed or he simply killed him because they were fighting. Um, you know, it's a very interesting case. I don't know if all the questions will ever be answered. We know that Nicole's head was almost severed. It takes incredible strength. Even if OJ was incredibly hopped up on coke or speed or meth, to almost sever her head to the spinal column, that takes incredible strength. And it, the murders were so gruesome. To me, it sounds like something that a serial killer like Glenn Rogers could more easily accomplish than OJ. So the theory is that Rogers and OJ went over there to scare her, and Rogers took it too far, especially when... Um, when Ron Goldman arrived and killed one and then killed the other as a witness. Tell me your comments, folks, because it's a very interesting case. Um, I absolutely personally believe that O.J. was involved in some way, whether he was alone as the killer or whether he was with Glenn Rogers just witnessing it or whether he helped in the crime. So, of course, the, the question also becomes, if Glenn Rogers was part of it, if O.J. even remembers what happened, I mean, he might have been so whacked out on drugs that he doesn't even remember what happened. But let's speculate. Wow, mail truck going by this lake. Let's assume O.J. does remember what happened. 
why would he never finger Glenn Rogers? Is he afraid that... Of course, Rogers is in prison now. Is he afraid that Rogers would have um, him killed or OJ's four children killed? We don't know. We really don't know. We'll never know. Is he being blackmailed by Rogers? Did he take the fall? And I, I always thought that OJ might have taken the fall for Justin, for Jason, excuse me, his son, who apparently has a very dubious um, alibi for that evening where apparently someone else was clocking in for him at his work and he's discovered that Jason Simpson has intermittent rage disorder, which OJ probably has too, which could lead to violent attacks. All I'm saying is this murder was about sex, jealousy, stalking, and absolutely drugs, and they led to violence. Cocaine and violence and jealousy and sex and murder. And it all came together on this horrible night, June 12th, 94. All right, folks, while well, my voice is starting to go already after <clears throat> 22 minutes, just like it did the other night with the John Belushi video, it's weird. Maybe I need some lozenges before I do this. Look at the nonstop traffic here. All right, guys, well, that's it for now. Um, <clears throat> please leave some interesting comments. I'd like to see your theories. Uh, and please like the channel. If you haven't already um, subscribed, please do so. And if you do subscribe, please hit the little bell icon next to the subscription button, and then you'll get notifications as to when I post, which is as frequently as I can do. Okay, looks like Bundy here is slowing down a little. Look how dark again. That That's Dorothy Street, which leads to the alley. Look how dark it is. All right, guys, I will see you. <clears throat> see, my voice is going. I feel like I've been to a concert screaming and singing for two hours. Uh, I'll see you guys at the next location. And uh, remember to also check out my other vlogs on this subject. Just scroll down until you find it. I've got, I think, one called Alternate Theory Number 2, O.J. Simpson Case. I have one called Did O.J. Um, have Help? And uh, check those out because I also talk about Glenn Rogers. And also check out, if you're interested in this case, check out my vlog... Um, on Ron Goldman's apartment because I do some talk. I, I talk to you there about not only the apartment. I don't know if you can get me here. Not only the apartment when I when I'm in front of Ron Goldman's apartment. I also talk about the Mezzaluna, the couple of waiters that got offed afterwards, and the cocaine and drug trafficking connection, and the weirdness about Fred Goldman's first wife, uh, Fred Goldman's wife Patty, Ron Goldman's stepmother, Glass, her first husband or her prior husband who was a notorious drug dealer and murderer. Very weird stuff. Okay guys, we'll see you at the next location. Thank you and bye bye.